Why? It's because why is it always up? It's because it's... <laughs> oh, Ramp! 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 Hello! Right in the camera. Man. Attention. Attention seeking. Should this be the intro to send me the signs? Yes. Yeah, yes, it you. should. Make it your intro. Starting off the news this week, a follow-up to NASA's DART mission, where they flew a spacecraft into an asteroid in an attempt to get it to move. And it has. NASA has announced the success of the mission, saying that this has proven that the space agency is serious as a defender of the planet. Lots of data and understanding has been gathered already, with NASA saying that they've got a lot to work on, such as more accurately understanding the full physical properties of the asteroid before impact. Nevertheless, this is of course a reassuring development in technology for those of us who occasionally lose sleep over all being killed by a meteor, although NASA won't quite be able to protect us from particularly large targets, or any targets that aren't detected early enough. In the paleontology news this week, we've got some interesting new studies, starting with a paper investigating the diversity of large theropod dinosaurs in the Cretaceous ChemChem -chem assemblage of the Algeria-Morocco border. The research explains how two species of Carcharodontosaurids had been identified from these deposits, the famous Carcharodontosaurus saharicus, as well as a species called Sauroniops pachytholus. However, the validity of Sauroniops has been thrown into question recently, with it being thought that the fossils assigned to the species are actually just juvenile Carcharodontosaurus specimens. This new study, though, re-analyzes a lot of material from these theropods, and also describes some new fossils, showing that Sauroniops is in fact a valid taxon after all. So this confirms that Carcharodontosaurids were indeed fairly diverse at this time in the Cretaceous of Morocco, with more than one giant species known from here. Also in the news is a fascinating paper re-examining a very important species called Scyromoclus taylori, a small reptile that lived during the late Triassic and is known from Scotland. This animal was actually first discovered over 100 years ago, and has been recognised to be significant due to its potential classification as an early pterosaur relative. However, because of the very poor preservation of the fossil material, its exact identity and evolutionary relationships have been quite unclear, but this new research now applies microcomputer tomography scanning in order to reveal previously obscured anatomical details. What they found was that Scleromoclus is definitely a close relative of pterosaurs, but is more similar in its anatomy to another closely related group to pterosaurs, the Lagopetids. It also still retains a lot of features that were likely also present in early birdline archosaurs in general, and all of this shows that the pterosaurs probably evolved from very small and running adapted animals that were probably facultatively bipedal. So a very interesting paper indeed. Well, that's it for the news this week, thank you so much for watching, we hope you enjoyed learning what's been going on in the world of science. And be sure to tune in on Sunday, we've got a very exciting announcement coming your way, so hopefully you'll enjoy that.